everyone. My name is Steve Saunders. I'm an assistant professor in the Voiland School of Chemical Engineering and Bioengineering. What I'm going to show you today is how to access your lecture that will be held in Zoom for the rest of the semester. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through all the steps, and I did a lot of the training in the college, so many of your classes will be set up by people who are trained with me. And so I'm going to set you up in the way that most people should be ha holding their classes. And so the first thing you need to do is download the Zoom client. So on the computer screen here, all you need to do is navigate to wsu.zoom.us. And this is going to bring you to the main Zoom portal. At the bottom is the download client window. Go ahead and press download client. And since I'm on a Windows machine, it's going to automatically recognize that I'm on that Windows machine and give me a list of clients that are only applicable to me. Download the very first one. Whether you're on an Apple machine or an, I, an iOS device or something else, you're probably going to want to click the top one in the link. So I'm going to go ahead and download the Zoom client for meetings, and it's going to start a download. Once that download is finished, you can open that file. And the Zoom installation will then start to proceed. It's going to be a little bit different if you're on an iOS device or an Android device. It's going to send you to the appropriate store. But if you're on a desktop machine, which is what we recommend, whether it's a laptop or a MacBook or anything else, it's going to start installing the application. It only takes a few seconds, so just be patient while it happens. And once it's done, it will automatically open. And you may simply see a Zoom window in the tray down here, or it may pop up the whole screen. If it doesn't pop up or open the Zoom client automatically, just navigate to the start menu or, or wherever your apps are located and open the client. You definitely want to make sure you sign in. Many of our classes are going to be restricted to WSU authenticated students only. So you want to make sure you click on sign in and then sign in with SSO. That stands for single sign on. That's how we log into all of the WSU applications and services that we have online. So just click in, click on sign in with SSO and go to wsu.zoom.us just like we did in the web browser and it will open up a window and have you sign in. Since I'm already logged into this machine, it automatically tries to open the Zoom client. And if it doesn't succeed in automatically opening it, just press the Open Zoom button. And so now I am in the main Zoom client. It takes just a second. And you're going to be dropped in here. You should see your initials in the top right corner. And that's how you can sign in or out of your client. Make sure it has your name and your WSU email address. And it should say license to make sure you're signed in appropriately. So once you're in, you're only, you should only have to do that once and you shouldn't have to do it again. So now you're ready to go ahead and try to access your class. And to do that, almost everybody is going to be using Blackboard to store the, the location of their classes. So go ahead and navigate to Blackboard. Just go to learn.wsu.edu. Sign in. Again, since I'm already logged in, it's not going to take me, well, in this case, it will take me to the WSU login page. Log in using your network ID and your, your user password. And then navigate to your class. Just remember, I'm in the instructor version of Blackboard, which just will look a little bit different at times. And I'll try to point out the places that it's different. So you can see I have a big list of classes, but the class that I'm going to be using to demo things is this Chemi 800 class. But go to the class that's relevant to when you're doing your lecture. Just click, click, click on the class, and on the left-hand side will typically be something that says go to class or direct to Zoom or Zoom. Look at the communications from your instructor to see exactly how they set up their class. But when you click on that, you will be then taken to a Zoom application within Blackboard, at which point you will see all of the lectures or office hours scheduled for that specific class. For a specific day, just go, and for you as a student, it'll probably only say join over here, and you'll only have a join button. And just when it's time to join class, just press that join button. It will automatically authenticate you through the Zoom system, and it will try to open the Zoom client and launch that meeting. It may prompt you and just go ahead and say open, and then the Zoom meeting will automatically start and you'll be put into it. You'll typically be presented with this screen in which it wants you to select computer audio or phone call. 
Whatever's appropriate for you, if you have a good speaker system or a good set of headphones, you'll probably want to join with computer audio. Now you'll see that in this class, I was automatically unmuted when I joined the meeting. And so as I'm talking, it automatically picks up my voice and you can see my voice levels there. And so you'll probably want to make sure you're muted most of the time. So you can just press that mute button and then you're muted and your audio isn't sent out. We've also recommended to all instructors that they start their meetings with that mute off, or excuse me, with the mute on, so your audio isn't just automatically transmitted. Along with that, we've recommended to instructors that they set all video to be off when people join. But recognize those settings may not have been set for every class that you join, and there is a small chance that when you join a meeting, your video will automatically start and be sent out. So just be aware in your surroundings whenever you join your class. Many classes will want you to have your face camera on, and so all you have to do is press the start video, and your video will then start. You can easily stop your video by pressing that stop video button. If you have multiple cameras on your device, whether it's a front camera or a rear camera, you can select what camera is being sent by pressing that little arrow and selecting the appropriate camera. Once you're in, there's a couple things that you can do to make your class a little bit easier and friendly. Uh, you'll have a participants button in the bottom in which there's this quick polling that will let you very quickly respond to the instructor. You can very easily say yes or no, and that gets transmitted to the instructor and the instructor will see that on the screen. You'll also have an option to raise your hand. Um, since I'm an instructor, I don't have that ability, but when you raise your hand, that's a good way of indicating to your instructor that you have a question and then it might be, your instructor may then want to acknowledge you before you just interrupt and have your question. When you're done with the meeting, simply go and press the end meeting button. And since I'm a host, it's asking if I want to end the meeting for all, you'll simply be presented with a leave meeting confirmation. So just go ahead and press leave meeting and you will then be out of that meeting. Your office hours may be held in a very similar way in which you simply go to Blackboard and there'll be an office hours meeting. Make sure you practice these things before class on Monday. You can see it only takes a few minutes, but if you're running behind or it's very early in the morning, you may not have that time Monday or Tuesday morning to get class set up and be ready to participate. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to reach out to the Crimson, the Crimson Help Desk or VCAIT or specifically your instructor. Thank you guys so much, and I hope you enjoy the last few days of spring break.